I'm disappointed in you. Please never use this as your comeback. I've had a few people use this one on me, and it's so irritating. It's the equivalent to, I'll pray for you, the Christian version of, fuck you, when they've lost a debate. In back-and-forth conversations with people, quite often, we'll reach a point where I'll be just dismissive of the claims because they fail to back things up with any evidence. Their arguments are vague ideas, such as, well, there might be more that you don't know, without pointing to me a valid source. Or they're arguing political ideologies because they've failed to explain it in a way that counters my misgivings and experiences with the idea. They usually use this in tandem with me being closed-minded, and if I just read this book that changed their life, I would understand. This is especially worse when they know you're well-informed and study constantly, and now on top of all the other things you're researching and studying on your plate, they want to stack another book on top that, at the moment, all evidence points to it being an ill-informed, unscientific, narrow-minded, utopian piece of crap and probably wastes a lot of your time and energy. If you want to spread your ideas, you have to learn to package it and know the arguments against it and why people have misgivings about it, beyond assuming that people are just brainwashed by the government or big business or the liberal bias. Could it be that they have legitimate misgivings they just can't express because they weren't expecting to have to learn an entirely new way of thinking about something and you're the one presenting the new idea? And remember, this is a really important issue to you while I probably couldn't care less about it as I have my own ideas that are equally important to me. I have to put just as much effort to explain to you why I disagree with you as you do to convince me and I really don't care enough to do that. I have finite time and energy, and you have to convince me that your idea is worth using brain energy on more than I already have. We had to do this with atheism and gay marriage. Learn to simplify it, learn all the common misconceptions and arguments against it. We couldn't just say, oh, go read Dawkins and you'll get it. We had to redefine the issue down and figure out where people were having problems accepting our premise. Brian Tulsa pointed out that the burden of proof is made up of two parts, the burden of evidence and the burden of persuasion. Atheists in marriage equality have the evidence in the bag, however the burden of persuasion is still on the person deviating from the societal norm. It's hard and it takes practice, but until you can counter every claim against a concept and present claims they can't be skeptical about or can't be refuted, it's quite possible you might be wrong, if it's radical and not part of the norm. I'm disappointed in you is a combo of logical fallacies. It's an appeal to emotion and authority because it's used by people who you have established a rapport with and they try and use that connection by pulling some patronizing attitude with you either implying, I used to look up to you or I have an authority level to talk down to you because I asserted it. It's a hope that the person will be guilted into reconsidering their position because they don't want to let either a superior or someone who holds you as their idol down. You still haven't proved your point. You are ignorant of what I already know even though you know I'm well informed and constantly studying, which is arrogance and egocentrism on your part because perhaps I've thought about it in detail before and dismissed it for reasons and evidence you can't begin to imagine without asking the right questions from me. No matter what you're trying to convince me of, be it religion, the supernatural, veganism, conservatism, libertarianism, anarchy, while you may think you have the evidence, the burden of persuasion is still on you. That's why peer review exists in the science world, and it works across fields, as a person in one field might be completely ignorant of something that is common knowledge in another field, and the other person can immediately disprove it. If you're showing me you aren't well informed, or only well on one side of the argument, I can dismiss your claim if you can't provide evidence. But don't pull the I'm disappointed in you on me and try and sway me if you can't be bothered to do the work to overcome the burden of evidence, much less the burden of persuasion, especially if it's something that, I don't know, I may have thought of before.